So good afternoon and good morning for some of our West Coast friends. I am, uh, oh, and Hawaii as well. Uh, I'm Susie Bruce. I am director of the Gordy Center for Substance Abuse Prevention at the University of Virginia and director of the Apple Training Institute. And um, I will be the first to welcome you uh, to this webinar in preparation for the Division II Apple Training Institute. Joining me, I'm Holly Deering, and I'm the program manager of the Apple Training Institute. So we're excited to see so many of you joining us today. Um, we know that many of you are already aware of this, but we are recording this webinar, and so you can both, after following it, you can download um, the slides, and you can also listen to us again or send that to any folks on your campuses that may not have been able to join you at this time. So what we're going to do is walk you through a little bit about um, the Apple Training Institute, what to expect over the weekend, um, hopefully answer some of the questions you already have, um, and there's also an opportunity that you can uh, type in questions through the chat feature, and um, when we're at the conclusion, we'll look through those um, and try to address anything um, that we haven't already covered in the webinar. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So just to give you a little bit of history, we know that the vast majority of folks, um, schools that will be attending the Division II Apple have never attended one of our um, training institutes in the past. So you may not be aware that um, we're in our 26th year. So the Apple model, which we will talk about and you'll learn about through the weekend, was created at the University of Virginia uh, 27 years ago now, 26, and um, ha since 1992 has been funded by a grant from the NCAA to take that model and look at how that can be applied at different institutions and really with the goal of substance abuse prevention and improving what's happening on your campuses. So we do this twice every year in January. Our very first Division II only um, conference training institute was in 2015 and we're really excited um, to host the second one uh, this fall. Obviously, this is a strong partnership between NCAA Division II and the University of Virginia and here at the Gordy Center. Uh, we work with a variety of other uh, partners, uh, the University of North Carolina at Greensboro's um, Institute for, to Promote Student, I'm sorry, Athlete Health and Wellness, uh, Center for Drug-Free Sport, My Playbook, which comes out of the UNCG partnership, um, and Team Coalition. So the overall goal is to provide education around best practices um, for uh, alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, and you'll see ATOG as our acronym, um, abuse, to really empower teams, and particularly those student athletes, to help find their voice and help them uh, assist administrators in identifying problems and finding solutions. And then over the course of the next year, our, our office will, support, will be supporting your teams in implementing those action plans, helping you find best practices and overcome roadblocks. So what attending the Training Institute will really do for you is um, help you learn quite a bit about what's going well, maybe what's not going quite so well in your department. We have a lot of opportunities um, to not just hear from national experts, uh, but also to share ideas with other Division II schools. What's going well um, at a campus that's maybe far away that you wouldn't know about um, that you can take back to your campus and really apply. We help you learn about what best practices are. And the biggest thing really is that last bullet. You will have an individualized plan that you will create with our uh, support and assistance as needed so that you can make change on your campus that is the right kind of change for your campus. So I'm not going to read through this whole list, but here are our learning outcomes. Uh, we measure these through pre and post test um, at the Training Institute, and uh, we just finished our report from the January uh, Institute and found that, in fact, every single one of these items are things that uh, participants improved upon um, before and, and following the conference. So here's the Apple model. Uh, you can see there are seven different components. And it's everything from those very first uh, contacts that you have with a potential recruit. Um, what kind of things are they hearing? What messages? Uh, what are the expectations and attitudes? The things that maybe aren't guided by a policy, but what's the impression that you hear um, 
if you're interacting with your campus. Formal things like the policies, the education programs that you have, uh, if you have drug testing, what are those uh, policies and procedures? And then the last two pieces, the sanctioning and referral and counseling. So if you do have a student athlete uh, that's developing a substance use disorder that's uh, breaking uh, policy, then what are the kinds of things that are in place to support those student athletes, uh, not really to punish them, but to provide an educational and developmentally appropriate um, form of assistance to help them? So next we're going to walk you through some of the process of preparing for Apple, which is the phase that we're all in right now. Um, as you already know, we are in Reston, Virginia, which is right outside of Washington, D.C., September 22nd through 24th. And every all team contact should have received at this point um, a paper brochure that kind of outlined, especially on the back, the Apple timeline. And it's a good way to kind of walk through the process. And we'll talk about all these key points and deadlines um, of ways to prepare as you, we get closer to September and beyond. So first and foremost, all of you should be in the process of building your teams. And this is of at least four, but no more than six members. And our requirements are that at least two must be student athletes. Um, I've received a handful of questions throughout the last month um, talking about who else can be on the team. And it really can be whatever is best to make your team successful. So is it other administrators, athletic trainers, and perhaps looking outside of athletics for that collaboration with health educators, student affairs professionals, perhaps someone in your counseling department. Um, and it's all about providing that variety of perspectives and skills. And it's all about having, making sure that you have a diverse group of people there that are represented of different genders, ethnicities, athletics, teams, and that sort of thing. We recognize and in September sometimes it's hard to get the fall sports, but making sure you know, you've got some, some men and some women on your team um, and not just upperclassmen. Maybe you've got those young leaders um, that are really great and up and coming and this is a chance for them to make a difference. Registration needs to be completed by May 26th, and the link has now been provided to Team Contacts. Uh, starting at the beginning of June, um, myself or we have a student intern, um, Morgan, who will be confirming our team rosters with the contacts. And so what we'll do at that time is say, check in with you as the team contact and say, hey, this is who we have re registered the list for your team. Can you confirm, is this everyone? Are you done? Um, and sometimes at that point, team contacts will say, oops, I have an, a student or administrator that has not responded or registered yet, and it's a chance to follow up. So we will begin doing that process at the beginning of June with you. There are some requirements for student athletes. It's just that their eligibility must not expire prior to the 2017 or 2018 academic year. And not a requirement, but again, we just can't help but emphasize the, having a diverse group of student athletes and administrators, but making sure um, you have a lot of different voices at the table. So the next thing that will happen starting June 1st is our athletics department baseline assessment. And this is one of the core components of Apple. And it's designed, it's a survey assessment designed to measure your compliance with our standards and really looking at the Apple model. We'll warn you now, it is long. Um, when I, I will PDF the survey and send a copy to everyone and um, in advance. And so you can print it out and take a look and send it and share it with your AD, share it with other people in your department and to get it filled out. It will need to be filled out electronically because we do need to um, compile the data and compare it. But it walks through all seven of our slices and walks you through the model. Um, please note that it is kept completely confidential. And I know because we're all in athletics, we all get a little competitive and we want to make sure we have the best score but um, I do occasionally get some frantic phone calls. Um, it, it's okay. You, only you will see this. And so it's a chance to just be honest and have those conversations. And it really serves to drive those conversations, in particular on Saturday morning, um, to really look at your athletics department and what's going on with your policies and procedures. And we would like to have it done by July 15th. And an email will go out on June 1st with the link to that survey assessment. 
So after you've gotten started with all this, travel is the next thing to think about. How are you getting to Washington, D.C. area? And we'll talk about the stipend. Dulles International Airport is only seven miles from the hotel, and it has a complimentary shuttle service. So we highly recommend that airport, if possible. There is, of course, Reagan uh, National, but that is about 22 miles away, and you will have to um, make sure that you guys have the super shuttle or taxi service to get there. So again, um, we understand flights are different, but Dulles is the airport of choice. If you are driving, um, we have self-parking at $10 a night. Uh, it's important to let you know, but all of the information regarding travel will come out in June um, and it will be communicated from the NCAA once we've submitted the list of prevention team members. So we take your list of registration and we submit it to them and then that is generated for the travel. Uh, all travel related questions are best answered by Lisa Rogers, the MEV administrator in D2 and her email is here and if you email me because you can't remember that, that's totally fine. I forward it on to her to handle all travel related questions. The NCAA Division II is very generous and is giving everyone a one-time $75 stipend provided to participants to help cover those incidental costs. So thinking about your ground transportation, your baggage, um, any meals not provided while at Apple. Um, this will be done after Apple um, and we will communicate all this as well, but it's generated from our, their travel system and it is sent to each individual participant who has to complete the expense form and each individual will get their stipend. Um, you don't need to submit rec um, receipts or anything like that. It's important to note that it is done individually though because if you all are going to share, say, a cab um, and one team member pays for it, discussion needs to be had as to how you all will then later perhaps divide up the um, stipends, but it will go to each individual, so it's important to know going in. So then the next question that comes out is after travel and stipends is, well, what happens if a team member drops out? First, you need to let me know of any changes to your roster. Um, it's less of a big deal if you're driving um, and we prefer if someone has dropped out from our end that it is try to replace, if you're going to replace uh, like another male for another male um, or a female administrator for another female administrator, that just makes things a little smoother on our end. However, it's really important to note that the airfares are non-refundable and non-transferable. Um, and so, and they are not, may not be reissued if team members change. So you will have to reimburse the um, NCAA Division II for the airfares purchase before a new team member can be authorized. So that's just important to know that people, we understand that things happen, but that the airfares are non-refundable and non-transferable. And of course, in thinking of cost, please do not book um, your flights any later than 30 days before the Institute. So you've made it finally, hopefully, to Apple and you're going to be, we are at the Hyatt Regency Ruston and all of our hotel rooms are shared double occupancy through our grant on Friday and Saturday night. And so through the registration process, you can indicate your roommate preference um, in the individual form. I've already been asked questions like if no roommate selected, you, um, the individuals will be placed with another participant from another school. So as we say here, a male athlete will be paired with, paired with another male athlete. Administrator, a female administrator would be with another female administrator. We do not put student athletes with administrators and we don't um, mix genders. So, um, but we do try to really take the point to say like, oh, well, who do we have as an athletic trainer? Find those common sports, common jobs um, to pair people together. Um, so do not feel that you must bring an even number um, of people in that regard so everyone can be roomed together. It's a great chance to make some new friends. Um, single rooms though are available for $122 and the link for that payment is in the confirmation email you will receive once you register. There is free wireless internet, always good to know. In meeting spaces and guest rooms, athletic facilities, of course, are available. Um, one thing also to note is that each person checking in must provide a debit or credit card, and that's just to cover incidentals. Cards will not be pre-charged any sort of room rate, and the rooms will all be charged to our master account. But should someone need a movie or room service, that, does, that is not covered, and so that will go on the card at that time.
And lucky for you, Apple staff will make all of your hotel arrangements. So we take care of everything for you. And so if you have any questions regarding the hotel or those arrangements, come to me and um, I can communicate that through the hotel. Do not contact the hotel directly. They work just with us. We understand that student athletes in particular like to eat and they eat a lot. So we provide all meals, um, Friday dinner through Sunday breakfast, and they're all served buffet style that try to take into account a variety of dietary needs. Um, however, should something not work for an individual, they can certainly come to us and we can um, see what we can do to accommodate any dietary needs. We do provide snacks on Saturday afternoon. And, um, but of course, it never hurts for our hungry student athletes to have a few in their bag. So the next thing people then say are, well, what do I bring? Um, our dress is pretty casual, um, khakis, jeans. Um, there is a pool so our students or anyone can pack a swimsuit. Um, we, of course, love for folks to bring and wear shirts and such that um, have their school names on it. And it's just kind of easy to see everyone that way. Um, we are going to have our annual t-shirt swap and we encourage you to bring a new campus t-shirt on Friday night and um, we just do it it's just a fun tradition we have. I wouldn't, don't stress about it having to be, um, well it does need to be new, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be one that you have to go to the bookstore somewhere and purchase a lot of, it can be a leftover shirt from an event you've had or um, going to the equipment room and asking um, for this donation or even the bookstore sometimes if you say you're going to a substance abuse prevention conference are always happy to help and support. We will provide pens and notebooks because we expect folks to take notes and learn. But um, we do have several things such as the action plan that must be submitted online. So um, having that laptop or iPad for some of those other um, things other than the phone is really helpful. Okay, so Holly's covered um, all the information to get your team together, uh, the beginning, getting you all the way to Apple. So what will happen um, once you're there for the weekend? So starting off, uh, for check-in, uh, just be aware that there are separate check-ins for the hotel and for the Training Institute. Um, each individual must check in um, at the Apple Training Institute table. So we, as we mentioned, we have a lot of evaluation. Um, so every individual will take a pretest that looks at those learning outcomes. And so that's why we need to have every single person check in with us. It's a very short um, survey. Um, and in return, when you turn it in, then you get your cool Apple swag. You get your um, shirt and bags and fun stuff. So that's just um, an important note um, that everyone must come and check in with us. So a few things to expect throughout the weekend. Um, we do evaluate every session. Uh, so some of those will be um, given to you at the beginning that you can check through. Um, we do a post-test uh, before departure, so that will be turned in Sunday morning. We do, as you've seen throughout this webinar, we have a lot of really fun team photos. So uh, that will be one of the things we do, and you'll get copies of that. And it's a great opportunity to network, um, both with our national speakers, uh, but also with other Division II teams. So a little bit about the presentations. Um, our faculty uh, give sort of keynote curriculum presentations. So that will primarily be Friday night, uh, Saturday morning to really introduce you more in depth to the Apple model and to the action planning process, giving you lots of ideas of best practices, what other institutions have done. And then Saturday afternoon, you'll have the opportunity to attend a number of different breakout sessions um, on a wide variety of uh, health and wellness topics. So Friday night, uh, check-in registration is 1.30 to 4. Again, every individual must check in. We have an orientation session. We have a separate one for student athletes um, from the one for administrators. And it provides you um, with an overview, what are the expectations, and then about half the time is really on networking. So you get to meet new people, begin to uh, make those connections. Dinner is at 5. Please let Holly know um, if your team is going to be late for any reason. Realize sometimes flights get delayed or you're stuck in traffic. Um, so just give us that quick little heads up and um, we'll see um, any way that we maybe can accommodate you. And Friday night we're really going to be covering a lot around alcohol and athletic performance. 
on Saturday, we will go through those seven slices of the Apple model and really spend the whole morning working on team meetings. So it will be an opportunity to hear a little bit of information and then really it's time within your teams to delve into how you can apply that in each of those areas uh, to your campus and to your athletics department. The afternoon again is breakout sessions. Um, again, team meetings in the afternoon, um, dinner and a, a reception to do some networking. And we're really excited to um, have Linda Hancock, who provides a keynote on Friday, also uh, revisit the one that she debuted this January um, and a really great um, keynote on mindfulness and particularly how that applies to athletics. We mentioned the team photos. Again, here's some examples of fun ones. Uh, those will be taken on Saturday. And you'll get a printed copy after you submit your action plan Sunday morning. And then we'll also follow up with some electronic copies so you can remember a great experience and have um, some good motivation on your action plan. Sunday uh, will be an opportunity to share uh, your action plan and hear what others are doing and again build more connections between other campuses that have worked in that area or are also planning or maybe close by. Uh, we have a great uh, closing keynote. Ross Zabo is um, presented at Apple several years ago and just got really fantastic reviews from our student athletes. You'll submit your action plan electronically. Um, upon that then um, in submitting your evaluations in the post test then you'll receive your team photo. And the entire training institute is done by noon. So as you're planning your travel, be aware um, that noon is kind of the closing time for the entire uh, weekend. So unlike most conferences that you leave and that's it, Apple never ends, no. <laughs> um, so after Apple, we're going to talk through what are the expectations and what happens when you get back in September. First, there's an expectation that you will meet um, with your Apple team to implement the action plan you created. And that may be um, expanding upon your four to six people that you've brought, bringing in other student athletes and administrators who couldn't be there, and building this team slash committee um, to continue to work on and implement what you have decided to change and bring to your school. Uh, we also have for team contacts to complete post-Apple surveys. Um, this is a really big um, component of who we are and our success is this follow-up assessments we do. Um, a lot of people say it's that accountability piece, knowing that we're going to check in with them. And three months and about nine months later that they know um, that someone's going to be following up so they want to get stuff done. So we will have that in December and again in April. And it's a good chance to just update us on your progress, barriers, that sort of thing. Um, and a chance for us to check in and also give you any assistance um, to help you overcome any barriers. And of course, keep us informed of changes to team contact information. If by chance you get another fabulous job at a different school and leaving, please let us know who would be the person who is taking over for you. We do have some advice um, from some of our past team contacts and we wanted to share that with you and it, it really boils down to having that open in mind and really listening to your student athletes. We um, spend time at the beginning as Susie said and we, we break students and athletes up from the administrators in those first sessions and, and I meet with the student athletes and I tell them that this is a chance for them to find their voice and this is a chance for them to be empowered and for them to speak up and say what's really going on in your athletic department surrounding alcohol and other drugs and to have that voice and to really step in um, and be the change and at the same time Susie is encouraging administrators to listen to the student athletes and um, really just listen to them. They know they have a good pulse on what's going on and so um, our data over and over again says that our student athletes come here and really feel empowered. We have another school that comes annually and says that their student athletes come to Apple as students and leave as colleagues. Um, and so what a, a fantastic relationship you can really form with our students at this time. And it's also just encouraging that openness and honesty and that chance to be daring to make change. Um, sometimes it seems a little overwhelming when you're trying to change um, a culture um, and some things that are perhaps embedded in tradition at your school, but to know that, to not always say no, that won't work, but to have an open mind and really be willing to start perhaps small, um, but to know that you can make a change and make a difference at your school. So to get you started to set up for success, 
Um, we encourage folks, perhaps in September, when everybody is back from their summer vacations, to set up that team meeting prior to Apple to review expectations, the format of the institute, and other details. A lot of people are very accustomed to that typical conference um, where you come, you attend some sessions, you maybe head off to the beach, you know, and then, um, but this is definitely a very working. Um, which is one reason we changed it to a training institute. We have a curriculum and it's definitely a very rigorous one at that. And so um, getting people prepared on what to expect. Um, we will send out the agenda in August um, as well to all team contacts and post it on the website so everyone can look it over, get an idea of what to expect. We'll of course have this webinar online um, and available for you if you want to sit down and share it with the whole team. We have some light homework, um, not to be afraid, but we encourage people, um, every member of your team, to go out and ask five people in the department um, or on campus, what's the biggest issue surrounding alcohol and other drugs in our athletics department? And just kind of get that informal survey of sorts, like what, what are students seeing, what are the administrators seeing, um, because it is just four to six of you sitting at a table. Um, so if you can come in with a little bit of a, a good pulse on what they think, what everyone thinks is going on, you might be surprised um, by what everyone is thinking and um, prepared to go in for. So. Uh, one of our team contacts also said, really stressed having that team meeting before you come to Apple. Um, and it could be done in the airport. <laughs> it can be done in the long bus ride, whatever you need. But it's having that chance to review the purpose and what to expect. Um, that way you can make the most of your time while you're there. Um, and, and it can often be sometimes the student athletes are really rolling with it. But if you've got an administrator or two who's like, wait, what? We have to do we have to do an action plan, what's happening right now. Um, so really um, getting people to understand our mission and our purpose and the goals really will set you up for success later. So just a real quick recap this summer. Just your to-do list of sorts is you should be working on your individual team member registration. That should be done by May 26th. June 1st, I'll give you a couple day break, and then we'll jump right into the baseline assessment. And then sometime in June, you need to start to think about booking your travel and figuring all of that out. So that concludes the main portion of our webinar, and we're going to kick it over to you all for questions. And you can type in the comment box and see if you have any um, available right now that we can answer right now for you. And as a reminder, um, we will be posting uh, the webinar so you can listen to it <laughs> or you can just look at the slides, again, if that's helpful to send out to colleagues who maybe weren't uh, able to participate, especially we know some folks, uh, their student athletes are already gone home for the summer. So that will be posted um, following um, the webinar's conclusion. And just looking to see if we have any other questions. All right, um, Jackie has um, written from oh, Hawaii. Welcome. Good morning. Early, early morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, can we use the same credit card for all rooms for incidentals? Yes. Aloha. Um, yes, um, I believe you can submit the same card for all the rooms. We just need to um, have that available at each student check-in. And typically, teams kind of go in and check together. So you can just have that on file for all of them. Great question. <laughs> well, if um, and if you're any of you are typing rapidly, that's fantastic. If not, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to call me um, or email uh, our number and our. Um, we have, of course, all of you have our email address and, of course, our website. Um, we just got a brand new website this August and we're really, that should be a good resource for you and your teammates as well as a chance to um, get some more information, see copies of past presentations um, and all sorts of information at appleathletics.org. And anytime, no matter how you may think your question is really bizarre or um, complicated, I. I'm always happy to answer them. I've probably seen it all. If not, you can win the prize. So um, give us a call or shoot us an email anytime. We are here to help you and here to make sure everything is set up for success. 
So we want to thank you for attending our webinar and hope that this can help set you up for success. And we are so excited to work with you and Division 2 in August, or September. <laughs> September. Let's not do August. In September. <laughs> thank you again. We're really excited. We can't wait to meet you all in just a few short months. Thank Thanks. you.